Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Renault, optometrist at Eagle Eye Performance Vision, where we specialize in vision therapy. And today we'll be covering convergence insufficiency. Before we start, we'd appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button to our channel, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, because we are gonna be posting content bi-weekly and soon to be weekly, trying to share our information with the world about vision therapy and to all who are interested. Convergence insufficiency. This is a visual dysfunction that has a profound impact on anything with a near visual task like reading, writing, and learning. Our eyes must turn inward to focus up close on the page and then stay in this, in this position as we advance across the page word to word while reading. And about five to 10% of students suffer from convergence insufficiency. And that's, that's a couple kids in every classroom, two or three kids in a 30 person classroom. So this is not uncommon. This is a very common issue that lots of kids deal with. And they must put forth excessive effort to get their eyes to turn inward, which is really important during sustained periods like reading, reading a whole chapter, keeping your eyes locked in, or also making quick transitions like board to paper when we're taking notes, far, near, far, near. This problem can result in a variety of signs and symptoms that we can see, one of them being double vision actually. When we're reading, if someone with convergence insufficiency, severe problems could see like this, where the letters split apart while they're reading. Kids could describe that as fuzzy or just difficult to see, or they might not even know that it's abnormal and think that everyone else sees like that. We also could see pain and, and problems like headaches after school, lots of fatigue and eye strain, they're rubbing their eyes a lot because they're actually, those muscles are actually hurting and they're uncomfortable. So we could see slow reading speeds, excessive time to complete homework, difficulty with note taking, falling behind in reading with comprehension and, and fluency. These are issues where if you are working really hard to converge your eyes, you are losing performance and attention elsewhere. So some of the questions that we get asked, does convergence insufficiency or vision problems relate to attention issues like ADD or ADHD, dyslexia as well, or other learning disabilities? The answer is yes, there's a big overlap in the symptoms and signs that, that we can see with these different conditions. A vision problem could be mimicking those attention or learning problems. So some kids, as they learn how to see the page more efficiently and stop seeing double and can get the page single, that in itself can make them a better reader because they're not working so hard to do something that should be automatic and easy for them. Another question is, what if my child sees 2020? Do they really have a functional vision problem like convergence insufficiency? And lots of kids, yes, they can see 2020 when their eyes are relaxed, looking far away, no muscles are flexing, it really doesn't take much effort to see that 2020 line. But think about where their world is. Nowadays, kids spend so much of their time looking at books and the tablets and screens and with e-learning increasing, so much of our world is up close where our eye muscles must flex and converge onto the page. So yeah, someone who sees 2020 far away could have all kinds of trouble when they're focusing their eyes up close. Fortunately, this debilitating condition is very receptive to treatment once it's properly diagnosed. We develop new neurological pathways that can really be taught, trained, and improved through treatment. And then once we know how to use our eyes efficiently, comfortably, with minimal effort, we don't really go back to the old way of working where our eyes have such a hard time coordinating up close and it's so uncomfortable and required a lot of effort. Now, how is this done? Optometric vision therapy is a program specific to each patient with activities and techniques designed to help them improve the visual skills that they're dysfunctional in. We also try to develop automaticity and skill with minimal effort. We do this one-on-one -on -one in our office with a vision therapist, as well as activities at home to reinforce the progress they made here. And then over time, the patient learns how to use their eyes in a better way, and then also learns how to do that without hardly trying at all. They can converge their eyes with minimal effort with better results too. Then we try to integrate these results with learning, reading, note-taking, anywhere else where the patient has goals and areas that they're struggling in based on their vision. We also love to work with our patient's teachers to create a learning environment more conducive to their vision. So taking our findings and diagnoses, we can create visual accommodations for the classroom to try to ease the visual demand while also helping them learn better with the, with the skills they currently have. And then the great thing about vision therapy is as the patient learns and develops the skills they're struggling with, 
then those accommodations can be relaxed because they don't really need them anymore. If any of these symptoms connect with you, if you know a child who could be struggling with their vision and learning, I encourage you to check out a website, covd.org, and there you can find a vision therapy optometrist near you. And if you're in West Michigan, you can call our office at 616-848-7548. We can set up a phone consultation to walk you through our process and see if the signs and symptoms you're observing in your child are, are potentially a vision problem. And then from there, we would have a really thorough neurodevelopmental vision exam to see exactly how your child's eyes integrate with their learning environment. Thank you for watching. Look forward to more vision therapy related content. We'll see you next time.